Now, what about subnet masks? I've mentioned subnet masks a few times. What is a subnet mask? What does it do? Well, a subnet mask is used to determine which part of an IP address is the network portion and which part of the address is the host portion. This allows a PC, for example, to determine whether a device that it wants to communicate with is a remote device or a local device. So here's an example. We have a PC with IP address 10.1.1.1 and another PC with an IP address of 10.1.2.1. When the PC on the left wants to forward traffic to the PC on the right with IP address 10.1.2.1, does the PC forward the traffic onto the local segment or does it forward it to its default gateway? If these two devices are in the same subnet, they can communicate directly without the use of a default gateway. But if they're on different subnets, the PCs will forward their traffic to their default gateways, which will do the inter-VLAN routing if they're on the local LAN or local area network as an example, or route the traffic if the traffic is forwarded to a traditional router. So a layer three switch may do the routing between two VLANs, or a router may route the traffic between these two devices if they are in different subnets. But how would you determine if these two devices are on the same subnet or if they're on different subnets? Now I'm going to explain this in more detail in the next few minutes. But as an example, 10.1.1.1 and 10.1.2.1 are in the same subnet if they're using a slash 16 mask. However, if they're using a slash 24 mask, that means that the devices are on different subnets. So let me explain that in more detail. A network mask allows a device to determine once again which portion of the address is the host portion and which portion of the address is the network portion. This allows a local PC, as an example, to determine whether the device it wants to communicate with is on a remote network and is thus reachable via the default gateway or if the device is on the local subnet and therefore does not require the use of a default gateway. So if PCA and PCB are in the same subnet, no default gateway is required. But if they're on different subnets, then a default gateway would typically be required to do the routing between the two PCs. So that's essentially what a network mask does. Now, as I've explained, class A, B, and C networks have default masks, which are also known as natural masks. In a class A address, the first octet is the network. In a class B address, the first two octets are network. And with a class C address, the first three octets are the network portion. I'll explain more complicated subnet masks in the subnetting videos, but let's first start with some simple examples. In this example, we have a class A network that hasn't been subnetted. In a class A network, the default mask is 255.0.0.0. So if we look at a address such as 10.1.1.1, and convert that into binary, it's gonna look as follows. Now look at the following mask. 255 in binary equates to eight binary ones. Zero in decimal equates to eight binary zeros. So converting the mask into binary shows us that the network portion consists of contiguous ones or continuous ones starting from the left-hand side. A one in binary in the network mask indicates network. A zero in binary in the network mask indicates host. So in this example, this portion of the address is network and this portion of the address is host. Hence, this device with IP address 10.1.1.1 is on network 10.0.0.0. This is the network portion and this is the host portion. This device with IP address 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 is on network 10. So 
When working out the network and host portions of an address, follow these two simple rules. Any address bits that have a corresponding mask bit set to 1 in binary represents the network. Any address bits that have a corresponding mask bit set to 0 represents the host. So 1 in binary means network, 0 in binary means host. So in this example, 10 is the network because there are 1s in the mask in binary. So the network ID is set to 10. Notice these octets are populated by binary zeros. That means host. So the host ID is equal to 1.1.1. So in summary, the network is 10. The host portion of the address is 1.1.1. Here's another example. Remember, any address bits that have a corresponding mask bit set to 1 in binary represents network. Any address bits that have a corresponding mask bit set to 0 in binary represent node ID. So here we've got a class A address, 1.1.1.1, but note the difference. The network mask in this case is 255.255.0.0. So converting 1.1.1.1 to binary gives us the following. Taking the network mask and converting that to binary gives us the following. Notice 255 equates to 8 binary 1s, which therefore means that this portion of the address is network. So the network ID is 1.1. And looking at the remaining part of the address, which is populated with binary zeros in the network mask, means that 1.1 is the host portion of the address. In other words, the network is 1.1.0.0 with a host portion of 1.1 on that network. The mask is 255.255.0.0. In this example, it's easy to see the network portion of the address because we have 255.255 in the network mask. Just be aware that things can get a lot more complicated than what we're seeing in these examples. You'll see that when we get to the subnetting videos. These two examples are simple because it's easy to recognize which portion is network and which portion is host. In the subnetting videos, I'm going to show you much more complicated examples. And in those examples, it's more difficult to determine which portion is network and which portion is host. So in summary, how does a device know whether another device is local or remote to itself? So the first thing it'll do is check the network portion of its local address and then compare that to the address of the other host. If the network portion of the address is the same, the local device knows that the other device is local to itself. If the network portion is not the same, the local device knows that the other device is remote. So in this example, are these devices in the same subnet or in different subnets? The PC on the left has an IP address of 10.1.1.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. The device on the right has an IP address of 10.1.2.1 with a mask of 255.255.0.0. So the device on the left does the following when it wants to communicate with the device on the right. It does a logical AND on the network portion of the address. So it first determines which portion of its address is the network portion, and then it compares that to the network portion of the device that it's wanting to communicate with. So in this example, the network portion is 10.1. So in other words, the first two octets of the address are network. The device checks the first two octets of the other device to see if it's the same as its local network portion. And in this example, they are the same. So the device on the left will send traffic to the device on the right directly, and it will not try and send the traffic to its default gateway. What it will do is send an ARP message onto the local segment requesting the MAC address associated with IP address 10.1.2.1. It will try and communicate with 10.1.2.1 on the local segment directly and not send the traffic to a default gateway. And the reason for that 
is that the network portion of the addresses are the same. So the local device knows that the other device is on the same local segment as itself. In this example, the network mask has changed. It's 255.255.255.0. So the device on the left will do a logical AND and check whether the network portion of the device that it's wanting to communicate with is the same as its network portion. So based on the subnet mask, the local device's network portion is 10.1.1. The device it's wanting to communicate with has a network portion of 10.1.2. So in this case, the network portion is different. So the local host knows that the device that it's wanting to communicate with is on a different subnet to itself. So because these two devices are on different subnets, the local device will send its traffic to its configured default gateway. PCs will send traffic to their default gateways when a default gateway is configured. In this example, let's assume that a default gateway is configured, and that's normally what happens in a real-world implementation. So the PC is trying to talk to a device in a different subnet, so it'll send its traffic to its default gateway. So in summary, the subnet mask allows the local device to determine whether the device that it's trying to communicate with is on the same subnet as itself or if it's on a different subnet. Now Cisco and most network vendors do not support discontiguous subnet masks. A discontiguous subnet mask would look something like the following. Notice in the binary, we have binary ones, then binary zeros, then binary ones, binary zeros, binary ones, binary zeros, and so forth and so on. This type of discontiguous subnet mask is not supported. Only contiguous subnet masks are supported. In this example, we have contiguous or continuous ones in the binary, and then contiguous or continuous zeros in the binary. Converting that to decimal gives us a value of 255.240.0.0. In this example, notice we have contiguous ones in binary and then contiguous zeros in binary, giving us a result in decimal of 255.255.192.0. So in a subnet mask, we must start with binary ones and they must be contiguous. So you cannot have binary ones, then binary zeros, then binary ones, and so forth and so on. They must be contiguous ones and then contiguous zeros. So you can't, for argument's sake, have a subnet mask something like 0.0.0.240. That's not supported. Subnet masks have to be contiguous ones followed by contiguous zeros. Discontiguous subnet masks are not supported, and thank goodness for that, because it makes our lives as network engineers a lot easier to have contiguous subnet masks.